Hello and welcome to Velocity Performance. Today is a short introduction to this new project. It is the 1993 Toyota Celica GTS. This is how I purchased the vehicle and has all of the normal modifications the average owner would do. And I'll get to those modifications in a minute. So what is today's video? It's a baseline of the power this car makes. Get a feel for what it does. After this step, I will analyze the data and we'll go from there. In a future video, I would like to put all the factory components on and see if it makes a difference in power and by how much. This is the first non-boosted Celica I put on a dyno, so I'm very curious as to what this will do. Let's get back to the modifications on this car. I'm going to start at the back and work my way forward. The muffler on this car is a Skunk 2 muffler. I'm not sure what series it is, but it seems to be well built, but it's still a little bit too loud without a resonator. The exhaust is a 2.25, so it's been slightly upgraded from the original size exhaust, where it retains the factory exhaust at the very front. The header is a typical header off eBay. It looks to be a copy of an OBX. This is something I'd like to test in the future with different style headers on the dyno. Finally, let's get to the colder intake. The car did come with an engine intake off of a 6 Gen Celica. However, I did put this standard unit back on because it's a little bit more convenient and a little bit easier to find for the average person. But we are going to test this in a future video to see if the engine intake makes any difference versus, say, the factory intake. So, all things to think about for future videos. I'm kind of excited to try all this stuff out. Let's get to the dyno videos because that's probably what you guys want to see more than me talking. Well, just like that, I'm back again. Let's talk about this graph. So from 4,000 to about 5,400, it really holds its horsepower. Early on, it's got some good torque. However, it does have a torque dip. I'm not quite sure what the cause of that is. That's something to look to in the future, possibly a adjustment or of some kind. Looking at this graph though, it really kind of climbs up in power and then plateaus. It makes 108 horsepower at 4,900 RPMs and 127 foot-pounds of torque at 4,300 RPMs. But by 5,400, it's dropping off like crazy. At the end of the run, it's making 83 horsepower, 72 foot-pounds of torque. That's not really going to do much for us. Now, if you look at the fuel ratio, it dips down at the very end, 10.5. At 3,800, we're looking at about 12.52. So between 3,800 and red line about 6,000, it's dropping down pretty good. Now that is on the rich side, so it's safe, but that's a little too rich for a naturally aspirated car. If I could, I'd pull some fuel out of it. However, being a factory ECU, there's not much I can do at this point. This really isn't that bad considering this is an old motor, old technology. So I'm pretty satisfied with these results. However, we're going to see if we can get a little bit more out of it. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you guys have any comments, suggestions, please leave them down below. And be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And I'll see you all next time.